is he, 36 meters, interested in me 33F or is he just being helpful and friendly? So my company has been working along with this other company. The last three months I've been working with one of their reps and just recently completed negotiations on a contract. The rep and I have been utilizing each other's resources to better our companies. He's complimented me saying amazing job negotiating and he's said he's never worked with anybody more knowledgeable and prepared. He's called me a special asset to my company. He's overpraised me in my opinion but it's some of the best compliments I've received since I've worked here. Instead of phone calls or Zoom meetings, he rather drive 30 minutes to my office for 20 to 40 minute one on one meeting. He once brought up the idea of meeting halfway at a coffee shop. During one of our off-topic conversations I mentioned I found a cute table set on Facebook Marketplace but no means to pick it up. And he offered his help with his truck. I called him on a weekday and didn't realize it was his day off. I apologized and said I can call the next day. He didn't mind and went out of his way to help me out. He said on his days off he's a single dad and his hobbies are hanging out with his kids and hitting up the gym so he's got nothing better to do. He encouraged me to call about anything, work related non-related, anytime. Sounds like he's interested in my opinion. It's hard to put yourself out there, but I'd give it a shot. Ask him out for a coffee, you'll never know unless you try. He wants you to check out his special asset. I'm so immature, literally the first thing I thought when reading the word asset is how to make a joke out of it. He said you could call him anytime about non-work related things. I think that was the big hint for me. When he basically read out his Tinder profile when you called him I would wager a guess he's absolutely interested. I'd say he is quite interested in you. If you're interested in him and there is no conflict of interest, I'd say look into this. My boyfriend told me I didn't live up to expectations. It's pretty much what the title says. I'm, F20, writing this to get it off my chest and for confirmation about potentially leaving him, M21, after what he said to me that just came out of nowhere or if I'm overreacting. I've known him since high school, and we're both in college now. I'm in a community college, and he goes to a university not too far from me, and we have been dating for the past seven months. We've never had any major fights or arguments or anything. We only see each other once or twice a week during semester, and we often hang out most when school is out or over the breaks. However, over the weekend, I slept over and we planned to have sex for the first time, but he quickly became upset when I didn't want to do what he wanted, and he asked me to sit in the splits while he released, and I told him I didn't want to because I simply didn't feel like it. But he got all mad at me and said I ruined the mood and that I thought dating someone who did yoga would be more fun, and he just got dressed and went to bed without saying much. I told him that wasn't fair and that it was my first time and I didn't want to, but he just didn't care and I felt like shit staying over with him. I tried to talk about it in the morning and he listened to me, but he said that last night didn't live up to expectations and that maybe next time would be better, but I don't want a next time if it's all gonna be about him and not about us, and I don't think I'm being entitled by thinking that way. I'm more than some hobby that he just happens to know about, but I feel like he's trying to guilt me for not going along with it, and even after what he said, he still believed that I was the one who was being unfair, and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it, and I'm considering ending things before the weekend since he hasn't changed his stance about it, but just wanted to hear some other opinions on how to best go about telling him it's over or perhaps trying one last time. Although I don't think it'll change anything, and especially if I don't want to do something that he's trying to guilt me about. Too long didn't read, my boyfriend said that I'm being selfish and not living up to expectations because I didn't want to do something he asked me to do in bed, and he's been guilting me for it and I've been considering ending things, but I want to know how it would be best to go about it. Edit, this was my first time ever, and there were no discussions about his fantasy beforehand at all. And it's not like I said that I would never do it, I just said said that I didn't feel like it then, and then he started shaming me and got dressed and went to bed and continued to hold the same stance in the morning, 
but it's not like I said that I never would. I told him I was a little scared being my first time, but he just didn't care, and that's why I'm considering it. Edit 2, I'm going to text him that it's over once I get off from work, and I'm considering sending a link to this thread and telling him what r slash covert said, that he didn't live up to my expectations, and that the only way I'll reconsider is if he can do the splits, but I'm going to actually block him. Really appreciate all of the reassurance and kind advice. Wait, was this your first time ever? Or just with him? Either way, you didn't do anything wrong by refusing. He's obviously watched way too much porn, and you're not his sex doll that he can manipulate into any position he wants. Gross. Curious here, did he make any efforts to satisfy you? Or did he just care about getting himself off? If he didn't take care of you first, I'd throw that doll a hit right back in his face. You know, it just didn't leave a up to my XPCT at IONS. Oh my god girl, run. This guy is a selfish ass. You should have sex with caring and giving people, if you want to. Don't try again. He had his chance and he completely fucked it up. He showed you his true nature. Call him or text him and tell him it's over. And focus on yourself and your pleasure. I've been planning to do so for the entire week and probably considering it for too long already. But the next time I'd see him would be on the weekend, so I plan to end it today and definitely before then. I feel like maybe I dodged a bullet if he's going to guilt me about not doing something he wants that could perhaps turn into something else over time and the more he thinks it's okay to try and pressure me into it. And I also feel that he just likes me because I do yoga, and the second I don't want to do what he wants, I'm no longer valuable. But I don't want a next time if it's all gonna be about him and not about us, and I don't think I'm being entitled by thinking that way. You hit the nail on the head here. Yes, he can have fetishes or requests. Yes it can be nice to have a flexible, yoga gf, but in the end, that's only a very little part of sex. Sex is great, not because of the physicality, but for a lot of people, sex is the externalization of the great bond you share. Great sex for that reason is not someone who has the best parts down there or who has the best stamina, but someone who listens to the desire of their partner and a relationship that reciprocates that, that's perfectly in sync with that. That's why your words about about him and not about us are the nail on the head, especially if this is your first time. I mean, you have all the time in the world later on to maybe explore a bit more after you feel confident and comfortable enough, but this is not that time, especially not for a girl, who's always a bit vulnerable the first time, in my opinion. So yeah, this argument on itself isn't the big deal here. The fact that he can't see what he did wrong on the other hand, that he can't have empathy or consideration for your point of view, that's the underlying topic that's very alarming. So yeah, I, 23M, would consider that as a red flag and a possible reason to break up, if my partner can't find a way to wrap her head around that. You obviously have to talk to him seriously about this subject and how it makes you feel and that it's very fundamental for you to have a partner who understands that. If he can't give you that, your relationship will always end at some point. You he is so gross. He said that last night didn't live up to expectations and that maybe next time would be better. This is so rude. He was comparing you to some script in his head which he didn't tell you about. He wanted you to be some kind of cool sex bunny. What did he do for you? He sounds selfish. And rude. Some script in his head. The script of some yoga porn video more like. No idea if yoga porn exists but it seems like just about anything can be woven into a porn film so. No, you shouldn't be even slightly guilty about it. If you don't feel guilty doing something sexually and someone is trying to pressure you into doing it anyways, leave the guy immediately. There is no excuse for that. Just dump the creepy weirdo through a text and never see him again. Honestly leaning towards a text message today, since the next time I see him is over the weekend usually, and I've been brewing over it for too long already, but just needed to hear from someone else that I wasn't crazy or overreacting.
went full North Carolina with mom after having baby. My mom has never been, let's say, the nicest mom to my brothers and I. My father has been out of the picture for years, he's a convict and can't seem to stay out of trouble. My father's side of the family lives in Mexico, all of which I've never met. And on my mother's side I've only ever met my grandma who is currently losing a battle to breast cancer. So my mom was all I really had. My mom struggles with pretty bad bipolar depression. She's known for getting physical, no I don't mean just spanking, being manipulative, and being controlling. She hates not getting her way. When I found out I was pregnant, my husband and I were very excited. My mother was too, but she was a little too excited. She began trying to control everything we would do with our expecting daughter, what she'd wear, her name, what school she would go to, whether she would be breastfed, and worst of all getting vaccinated. My mom is anti-vax, and she told me that she would not tolerate us vaccinating her because she didn't want a enter derogatory word, granddaughter. P.S. It sounds like restarted. I told her absolutely not and my husband and I would not put her health at risk under no circumstances. She did not like that. She said my daughter was her granddaughter and she should decide what's done with her since she's raised kids before. I put my foot down and told her to F off and I would not be speaking to her until she's gotten therapy and I see that it's working. I blocked her on everything and have not spoken to her in a little over 5 months. My brothers are begging me to let her meet my daughter but I refuse. Husband is on my side and feels it's in our daughter's best interest to not have my mom in her life. However I do feel bad sometimes. I know my mom is sick mentally and going North Carolina and not allowing her to meet my daughter feels a little cruel to me. Is there something else that could possibly work? Edit, thank you to everyone who's given me advice. I've decided that, although I love my mom and miss her, I love my daughter much more and won't be allowing my mom back into my life, including supervised visits, until she gets therapy, which may or may not ever happen. Thank you everyone. Is there something else that could possibly work? I sincerely doubt it. Sometimes the only thing that narcissists understand is strictly enforced boundaries. She had her chance. You have nothing to feel guilty about. She could have wound her neck in from day one, but she couldn't. Whether she couldn't because she's malicious or because she's unwell doesn't matter because this is your daughter's mental health and your ability to be a good parent that's at risk. No matter the reason, she couldn't do it. Protect your daughter. You're doing the right thing. ETA, just because you won't allow her to do her damage, doesn't mean you love her less, or you don't care about her, or you have to be angry with her. You can love your mother whilst being aware that having her in your daughter's life is a bad thing. It doesn't have to come from a place of anger. Don't let anger and guilt eat you up over this. Let yourself love her, but not blindly. Being bipolar is no excuse for being a controlling asshole. You did the right thing. If your mother can't control herself she shouldn't be in contact to you, your husband or your daughter. I would have done the exact same thing. Good luck to you and your family, thumbs up, thumbs up.